To better understand the performance tuning opportunities that are embedded in the Ryzen Threadripper 3990X CPU, let's have a closer look at its architecture. The Ryzen Threadripper 3990X is AMD's flagship product in the Castle Peak Zen 2 product lineup. It is the most powerful consumer desktop CPU you can buy today. It is derived from the Epic server line and has no less than nine chips on package, eight CCDs and one single IO die. CCD stands for core chiplet die and is just the die on the Ryzen CPU that has CPU cores. The Zen 2 CPU cores are packed together in what's called a CCX or core complex. A Zen 2 CCX consists of up to four individual cores, each with its L2 and L2 cache and a shared 16 megabyte of L3 cache. Two CCXs are packed together inside a CCD, effectively packing together eight Zen 2 CPU cores in one die. The frequency of the CPU cores is driven by a 100 megahertz reference clock input. Each CCX has its own PLL and thus can run an independent frequencies. The cores within a CCX share the same PLL, so they'll run at the same frequency. For the Ryzen Threadripper 3990X, that means we can set an independent frequency for each of the 16 CCXs. The voltage of the CPU cores is provided by the VDDCR CPU voltage rail. This voltage is shared across all the CCDs, so each CPU core will be provided with the same voltage. That said, AMD extensively uses integrated voltage regulators. The voltage regulators are ultra high efficiency, digital low dropout or DLDO. Most of the power domains, including the CPU cores, caches, fabric and so on, have their DLDOs, which can be controlled individually. However, for consumer desktop parts, these DLDOs are permanently bypassed. That means the regulators are disabled and the voltage regulation takes place on the motherboard via the VRM. Choosing the right manual voltage will always be a trade-off between increasing the overclocking headroom, having to deal with the increased thermal challenges, and also considering the CPU lifespan. The Castle Peak package is divided into four equal quadrants. Each quadrant consists of two CCDs and two linked memory channels. So in total, Castle Peak processors offer up to eight channels of DDR4 memory, half of which are disabled on the overclockable Ryzen Threadripper non-pro processors. Even though that's half of what the Zen 2 Epic server processors offer, it's still double the channels compared to the desktop Zen 2 Ryzen CPUs. At this point, it's important to highlight the significant architectural changes between Zen 1 and Zen 2 processors. On Zen and Zen Plus processors, there are up to four CCDs on package. Each CCD contains, alongside the CCXs, also one memory controller, four Infinity Fabric connections, and a bunch of other I.O. Each die has access to its own set of memory via the on-die memory controller. When a CPU core wants to access data stored in the memory connected to another die, it needs to go via the Infinity Fabric connections to access the memory controller on that die. This came with a significant performance penalty. As per AMD documentation, the memory access latency via an on-die memory controller would be 90 nanoseconds. In a worst case scenario, memory access latency from a different die would be as high as 234 nanoseconds. In memory latency sensitive workloads, like gaming, this yields quite a performance impact. As a solution, AMD promoted a gaming mode, which would disable cores to prevent a CPU core from having to check other CCDs' memory controllers. On Zen 2 processors, there are up to 9 chips on package, 1 I.O. die and up to 8 CCDs. The CCD is vastly simplified as it now only contains the CCXs with the CPU cores and an Infinity Fabric connection. All other I.O. connectivity, including the memory controllers, moved from the CCDs into the on-package 40 nanometer I.O. die. This ensures better overall latency for memory access, but puts the onus on fast fabric clock to ensure high performance. When a CPU core needs to access data in the system memory, it connects via the Infinity Fabric to the I.O. die and then accesses the memory controller. While the minimum memory access latency increased from 90 nanoseconds to 94 nanoseconds, 
the worst case scenario decreased from 234 nanoseconds to 114 nanoseconds. On average, that's a substantial performance improvement. AMD officially supports up to DDR4-3200, but of course Ryzen CPUs can overclock the memory a little bit higher than that. But it's not as easy as it may sound. To make a long story short, there are three relevant frequencies when it comes to system memory overclocking. IMP clock or memory clock is the frequency of your DDR4 memory. U clock or memory controller clock is the frequency of the integrated memory controllers. F clock or fabric clock is the frequency of the infinity fabric. The memory and memory controller frequency is driven by the same 100 MHz reference clock also used for the CPU cores. The memory controller and memory frequency are tied together. You can run both at the same frequency or when memory gear down mode is enabled, run the memory controller at half the frequency of the system memory. The voltage of the memory is provided by two VDDIO MEMS3 voltage rails. Each voltage rail powers the memory linked to a specific memory controller. The voltage for the memory controller and fabric is provided by the VDDCR SLC voltage rail. When the CPU wants to store data to or retrieve data from the system memory, it does this through the Infinity Fabric and the memory controllers, which are embedded on the I.O. chip. By default, the system memory, fabric, and memory controllers are running in synchronous mode. That means that they're running at the same frequency. When overclocking, we can choose to either continue to run synchronous mode or run asynchronous mode. Synchronous mode is relatively taxing for the CPU. So on most Ryzen CPUs, the system will automatically enable asynchronous mode beyond a certain memory frequency. In asynchronous mode, the memory controller will operate at half the frequency of the system memory, and the fabric clock will also run below system memory frequency. This will result in a performance penalty. The size of the performance penalty is application specific and also depends on the final memory frequency. A sufficiently high memory frequency can overcome the performance penalty from running in asynchronous mode. Because the memory overclocking capabilities of Ryzen Threadripper is fairly limited, not in the least because of the four memory controllers, we prefer to run in synchronous mode. The fabric clock frequency is driven by the same 100 MHz reference clock also used for the CPU cores. It can be clocked independently from the CPU cores, memory controller or memory frequency. The voltage for the fabric is provided by the VDDCR SOC voltage rail, which also powers the memory controllers. While there's only one incoming voltage rail to the I.O. die, remember that AMD uses DLDOs to internally create additional voltage rails. That's why you'll find options like the VDDG for the fabric PHY in the BIOS. Zen 2 processors can, generally speaking, run synchronous mode all the way up to DDR4-3600 and a fabric clock of 1.8 GHz. However, some CPUs are better than others.